Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kat and today I'm talking about my Shorty September TBR. So the Shorty September readathon is hosted by Bert from Past Story Time and the Soggy Expat Book Nerd, I believe. Uh, and I did it last year and it was really fun. Uh, it's reading a bunch of short things, hence the shorty in the title, in September. So for me, shorty is 250 pages or less. I don't have really a, many books that fall shorter than that. So that's kind of the scope that we're in today. The shortest one is 83 pages. The, the biggest one is 251 pages. So uh, there are 12 prompts to get into. I will leave the links to the reading readathon challenge down below. And without further ado, let's get into it. I am battling dying light outside. So if the light changes, we're just gonna go with it. So I'm gonna talk about them in order from the shortest book I'm gonna read to the longest. So let's start it out with Boxer Shorts, which is a comfort read. And I'm gonna read The Little Prince by Antoine de saint Exupéry. Uh, and this one is a French translation. It's very famous um, and it is only 83 pages. So um, this one is illustrated and it's pretty beautiful. So. I am looking forward to it. I'm also a bit hesitant because I heard that for a children's book it's actually pretty emotionally devastating. So um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it though because I've had it for a while. Uh, the next one is Shorty Shorts, a book from the 70s or 80s. This one I'm interpreting as set in the 70s or 80s. So I want to read Lie With Me by Philippe Besson, and this is a French translation again. Uh, this is about two teenage boys in 1984 uh, as they have an affair along the coast. Um, and it's just giving summer vibes and it's 149 pages long and it's super highly rated with 4.24 on Goodreads. So I'm keen for that one. Next up is Runway Fashion Shorts, a uh, beautiful cover. And to this, absolutely, it has to be What Moves the Dead by T. Kingfisher. Now this is completely subjective, but this is a beautiful cover to me. It's intriguing, it's a bit dark, it's a bit of uh, mushrooms, death, black, love the font of the title, just everything about it appeals to me. Uh, so this is a reimagining of The Fall of the House of Usher by Poe. Um, and it says, when Alex, a retired soldier, soldier receives word that his friend is dying, uh, he rushes to her ancestral home in the remote countryside. Uh, what they find there is a nightmare of fungal growth and possessed wildlife surrounding a dark pulsing lake. Madeline sleepwalks and speaks in strange voices at night, and her brother Roderick is consumed with the mysterious malady of the nerves. I think it sounds absolutely wonderful. Of course, I've already read uh, the original The Fall of the House of Usher a long time ago, actually in university for my English degree, uh, and I did quite like it. Uh, so I am really keen for this one. The cover is just stunning, um, and this is 176 pages. So I think it sounds gothic and there's something about fungus where it's either cottagecore or like horror and macabre. So uh, I'm hoping more of this one. All right, next up is Ripped Shorts, a slasher or murder mystery. For this one, I'm going to read Tactumi, an anthology of Arctic horror stories. This is only 184 pages. Um, and Tactumi is an inuktitut word that means in the dark. And these are spine tingling horror stories by Northern writers that show just how dangerous the darkness can be. For example, a family clinging to survival on the tundra after a vicious zombie virus. That honestly sounds like the worst. I hate being cold. And then just throw zombies in there. A door that beckons waiting to unleash terror behind it. A post-apocalyptic community in the far north where they aren't quite what they seem. I don't want to read more. It sounds absolutely fabulous. There's something about cold that I find way more horrifying than heat. So I bet this will be really scary. <laughs> and I don't think I've ever read any stories from the Arctic. So also looking forward to that. Uh, 
Next we have Bermuda shorts, which is to read something translated. So of course the first two that I mentioned were from France and their translations, but for this one I wanted to read a new one that caught my eye. This is Dogs of Summer by Andrea Abreu, um, and this I believe is an Italian translation. Um, it says, my brilliant friend meets blue is the warmest color. Um, it's set in a working class neighborhood in the Canary Islands. It's about two girls coming of age in the early um, aughts. Is that early 2000s? Am I just old? I don't know anything. And a friendship that simmers into erotic desire over the course of one hot summer. So I think like Dogs of Summer is the female female version maybe of Lie With Me, the one that I mentioned earlier. They're both summer, they're both kind of love affairs of the young heart. So um, I think it sounds brilliant and it's 192 pages. Uh, next is The Emperor's Shorts, I think. Like, the, well, I think it's the story where the emperor pretends to have invisible clothes. Um, and it's an unreliable narrator, which is very fun. So for this, I'm gonna read The Harpy. Uh, and this is involving a husband and a wife. The husband hurt the wife, so in order to get equal again he says she's allowed to hurt him three times and I can't think of someone who's more unreliably telling their story than someone who is having like a whine or complaining about their significant other you know they're gonna blow things out of proportion and in this one because I know that it's gonna get dark like hopefully probably the relator the relator the narrator is hella unreliable so yeah Looking forward to this. It's 194 pages. Next up is Nature. For this one, I want to do The Blood of Angels by Johanna Sinisalo, which is a Finnish, I believe, a Finnish translation. Um, I love Sinisalo's writing. She is like Scandinavian, new weird. Uh, and this follows a beekeeper who um, is devastated by the recent death of his eco-warrior son. And he finds two of his beehives deserted and begins to fear that the epidemic of colony collapse disorder has reached Scandinavia. Then in the attic of the old barn, he makes a mysterious and frightening discovery, a pathway to a parallel world. Is it a hallucination stimulated by sorrow or is it something very real and connected with the bee's disappearance? So I think that like, He's an ecologist, he is a beekeeper. It's all about the natural world uh, in combination with weird elements. So I think it really fits well for this one. I forgot to mention, it's cargo shorts for the nature prompt. Uh, and this one is 219 pages. Uh, next up is denim shorts, read a modern classic. For this one, I'm going to attempt to finish Rosemary's Baby. Uh, so my bookmark tells me that I got 59 pages into it and then I stopped and I think I stopped back in March. So um, I'm really hoping that I finish it. It's about a couple that moves into their dream apartment. However, because it's so old and it has a lot of history with the tenants that used to live in it, things might not be as it appears to be. Also that is a demon tail coming out of the baby carriage. So um, yeah, this is 229 pages and I hope that it gets better than it was because um, I was a little bored when I was reading it last. All right, next up is Lifeguard Shorts, a beach read. And for this, I'm interpreting it as a literal beach. So uh, this is gonna be Our Wives Under the Sea by Julia Armfield. Uh, so I loved her short story collection, Salt Slow. It's one of my favorites of all time. And this is her first novel. So I'm really excited about it. We're following a married couple, uh, two women. One of them goes missing when she is in a deep sea mission on a submarine and all hands are presumed lost or like they don't know what's happening, something weird is going on, when suddenly her wife shows up and the company tells her that she can go collect her missing wife. But when she picks her up, she realizes the woman might not be who everyone thinks she is. Maybe she's not her wife. So I've heard mixed reviews of this that it's not actually as overtly scary or overtly horror or weird as you think um, to more just go with the flow. So I am very willing to do that. Um, and this book is 240 pages. Next up is Skorts to read a mixed genre book. And for this one, 
Um, it's one that I've never heard anyone talk about. It's The Memory Theater by Karen Tidbeck. So Karen Tidbeck wrote Amatka, which is a brilliant dystopian about a really icy city where language has power. So if you don't say the names of things, they start to melt. So in order to keep the world solid around you, you have to know the names of everything and say them out loud. It also has queer aspects. And I just thought it was like one of the most brilliant, weird dystopians I've ever read. So uh, this one is also truly bizarre and definitely can't fit into like one genre alone. Um, it is shelved as fantasy, sci-fi, horror, magical realism, speculative fiction. So many, and they're all straight up my alley. So it says, in a world just parallel to ours exists a mystical realm known only as the gardens. It is a place where feasts never end, games of croquet have devastating consequences, and teenagers are punished for growing up. For a select group of masters, it's a decadent paradise where time stands still. For those who serve them, however, it is slow torture where their lives can be ended in a blink. In a bid to escape before their youth betrays them, Dora and Thistle, best friends and confidants, set out on a remarkable journey through time and space. Traveling between their world and ours, they hunt for one person that can grant them their freedom. So I, when I read this description, I was like, okay, I'm intrigued. But it's really the comments that sold me on this because like, for instance, it says Wonderland meets Neverland with more prescriptive scarification and cannibalism. Uh, okay, I've heard that this is just so inventive and a wild ride. So I'm really, really looking forward to it. Um, Tidbeck's um, imagination is brilliant. And that is uh, 240 pages as well. So the penultimate book is book and movie, half and half. So for this one, I'm choosing Call Me By Your Name by Andre Osman. I've had this forever and this is one of the books that I'm scared to read and also I wanna read it the most, if that makes sense. So I suspect I'm gonna love it. I, I really think it's gonna be one of my favorites of all time. Um, but also I don't wanna read it cause I can only read it for the first time once. Like if you also feel that way about some books, let me know, but I don't wanna read it. I've held off, but I also think I'm gonna love it. So yeah, this is for book and movie. The movie is one of my favorite movies of all time. So it will be no no like hard job to watch the movie as well. Um, and this comes at 248 pages. I don't think I need to tell you what it's about. Everyone knows that one. Um, and the last one is Play Suit Shorts, a book you'll regret, <laughs> which that's so funny because yeah, play suits are such a regretful thing. Um, so the last one is A Certain Hunger uh, by Chelsea G. Summers. And this is about a food critic turned cannibal. Uh, as maybe the cover could explain to you. Um, and the reason that I might regret this is because I've been catching up on all the videos recently of booktube creators I really love and one of the ones mentioned by Kayla from Books and Lala that I watched recently was how she didn't like this book and how it didn't work for her even though she loves unhinged female characters. Is, and that's a thing that I love as well. Um, and I'm just like, oh crap, I really hope that I like it and I don't regret it. But I suspect I might regret it. So yeah, that is the last one. Uh, those are the dozen books that I'm hoping to read for Shorty September. I am really excited about a lot of them. Um, I have five that are physical. I'm trying to read through my shelves more um, because I'm really, really bad at that. Um, but yeah, let me know what you're reading for it. I'm really excited to get back into reading and being on booktube and I'm just really excited to find some great books. So I will talk to you in another video soon. Lots of love. Bye!